Alex Hawkinson from Smart Things and Fabrice Boutin uh, from Happy Fork. Now, this is such a wonderful story, actually. Uh, the fork that tells you when and how to eat. Now, moving yeah. to on now. Uh, Fabrice, now you became quite well known because of this, this uh, Happy Thank Fork. You, Mike. So tell us all about it. Mike, you know, we created Happy Labs because we want people to take control of their health, fitness, and happiness. So Happy Fork is the first uh, device connected via Bluetooth, via USB, that is connecting to your mobile phone and tracking three very important data. So we're going to be tracking the time you eat, the time you start eating, the time you finish eating, the duration of your meal. We're going to be tracking the number of times we bring food to the mouth, and we're going to be tracking the speed. So if you bring the food too fast, then see what will happen. Just put the finger here, Mike, and you will see this gentle I feel vibration. Like I'm having a Yuri Geller moment. <laughs> just, right. just here, here, just to feel so just the gen gentle. Oh, yes. oh, there's a little bit of a, a vibration. So that's Small. where, because the, this tool is made to monitor and to change eating habits. So that's how this Internet of Things is going to be helping, so we can take control. Now, Happy Fork, and I have a slide here on my PowerPoint I want to show is um, definitely so easy to use. Everybody knows what a fork is. And it was invented by a French inventor. His name is Jacques Lépine. He spent seven years of his life. By the way, if there are any inventors in the room that uh, want to change the world like we do and uh, have ideas, I'm going to be here the whole day, so let's meet, because we need inventors. We, we are also a platform. We need people to help on that. And, uh, we're going to be tracking and reporting. So, so the, the uh, three level of... Yeah. I want to show you here, I have a small video to show how this is being connected to your smartphone and to your computer. So that's true that we got some good uh, media coverage at the CES, but this is a full solution. It's coming, as you're going to see here, with a, a, pro a coaching program, a mobile application. So washable easy to use, put it in the washing machine, Bluetooth 4.0, BLE, connection to your smartphone or USB, very simple to do. And that then can survive a dishwasher, can it? <laughs> that's how the dashboard is going to look like. So you will see all the data. So again, we take control of the data as we own it, it's our health. And we know nutrition is very important. Mobile application, we talked about it. Coaching program, 21 days coaching program coming to the solution. So we want people to be successful. I mean, we want to change the habits. That's what Happy Fork is about. So in, in effect, this is kind of like a Fitbit for eating. It's, I mean, it's a serious issue. You know, I'm, I'm a gluten intolerant myself. So it means I have to be very careful with the the food I eat. It's like, you know, if you make a mistake, it's like putting the wrong gasoline in your car. Can you, uh, so do you see a time when you'll be able to detect the type of food that you're eating? We, we, we have I mean, projects coming, you know, this is the version one. It's going to be on Kickstarter. I mean, it's going to be on crowdfunding platform we, um, within a couple of weeks. We need the help of everyone. I mean, who agrees in the room here in the audience that 50% of our health is influenced by what we eat. Raise your hand if you agree. So, this is important, and I see here potential customers for the IP Fork, and I need your help because we need to help everybody in order to take control of the nutrition, and it's not easy. Very quickly, I mean, the, what's the market do you see for this device? Do you see it as being very much a uh, developed world market? Um, uh, do you see it as a, or a niche of the developed, perhaps people who are particularly concerned about certain types of food or, um, or perhaps people who have uh, eating disorders or, or do you think it's pretty mainstream, it's something that could go mainstream? No, it's, it's not a device for everybody. It's a device for people who want to eat mindfully. And as I'm showing on the slide here, if you look at the data in the US market, 100 million people have digestive problems. So when you eat more slowly, what happens? is that the food is going to stay longer in your mouth. So it means 
you will have more time and you're going to be helping the digestive systems. So it's, uh, it's like the energy you need to break down the food is going to be happening here versus in the digestive system. So you have less stress. And, yeah, and in fact, Alexa tried it yesterday with me, but if you look, also 60 million people have, are suffering from obesity. So by eating more slowly, you eat less. And there was a medical study in the, in the United States showing that when you eat more slowly, you eat 11% less calories. So, um, I, I mean, there's, I can see grounds for collaboration here as well, because, I mean, to some extent, uh, your platform could be controlling and Definitely. monitoring the Happy Fork yeah. movements. I mean, We've been talking about some. One of the things we see is that, you know, we've, we've sort of had uh, still early stages, but we've got about 3,000 developers and device makers that have signed up on the SmartThings platform, building new types of connected objects and then applications that put them together. And it's been really cool to see sort of unexpected combinations, <laughs> right? There's already a guy that's hacked the Fitbit so that if you didn't make your steps today, your, your, your heat won't work tomorrow, right, as an example, because SmartThings can control the thermostat. Or uh, we know when users are asleep, as an example, people are building sleep sensors. So easily you could put together a combination where you say, oh, how do my eating habits influence my sleep uh, behavior? Maybe that's an issue. Or an elder care application. Is grandma sort of eating sufficient food to sort of uh, stay independent and so on? So you never know what the possibilities are as all of these object types come online. And that's, that's part of what's uh, really exciting outside of just, of course, the sort of big scenarios like that we can certainly save sort of 30% of worldwide energy <laughs> use and a bunch of other big problems as well that can be s solved by it. So let me just uh, uh, a little bit of um, ask you guys. I mean, is anyone here uh, developing um, hardware device, h hardware or software similar to what you're seeing on stage here right now? For instance, any put your hand up if you're, if you're in the room and you're doing anything like that. Okay. Oh, Next it's year a very early that. stage. Right, sir, yeah. we have a volunteer. Come up here. Come up here. We're going to have a user demonstration. And uh, all, we have to, all, we, uh, all you have to do is sit here. Now, sit here briefly. Uh, this is not staged, by the way. I don't even know who you are. Who are you? Marco. Marco. Okay, um, and what's the name of your company? HealthSync. HealthSync. How appropriate. Right. Welcome. You, sir, you have to pick up that fork yep. and just feel its, uh, feel its electrical vibe, shall we say. What do you think? I think it's pretty good, actually. You, you get the sensation that you're doing something wrong, but it's uh, moderate enough that you, know, you don't feel... Uh, yeah, and the result yeah. is immediate. Yeah. So you're going to be using it, and right away you change the habit. Uh, you're obviously from a... Um, in one sentence, what's your company? We develop uh, sensors for uh, people with cardiovascular condition, for continuous monitoring, so it's wearable sensors. So you're obviously converted to this, this whole platform, but uh, do you think that you're going to compete? Uh, be d people won't be able to plug their fork into their iPhone and their Android won't plug into their knife? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do you think there's going to be a huge device? I mean, we talk about device um, fragmentation with mobile. I mean, do, we f do you think that device fragmentation at, at this level will happen? Um, actually, no. I, I, I think that in, in the last couple of years, perhaps a couple of years ago, there was much more fragmentation in terms of the direction people were taking, but, but now I think the way the direction, the direction technology has to go to provide a sensible solution I think is pretty clear. So I think we're going to see technologies converging. What sort of size of a market is this going to be in a few years' time? We're talking billions of dollars. What do you think? What do you guys think? I mean, uh, we see indications already. You mentioned Nest. It's just one example of a connected object instead of a closed platform, and certainly they're on a a big track. Uh, they think they'll sort of ship a million units a year starting by the summer. We've certainly seen sort of tens of thousands per month already. So it's, it's early stages, but the sort of question is, are you a user of stuff? You know, do you use stuff? And you're, you, you do at some point. So it's, it's one of those things where everything around us, there'll be a digital representation of it. And, uh, you know, there's a, any, everybody has a scenario that they can connect with. So we think it's it's one of those things that's going to develop very quickly, you know, over the next couple of years, we certainly expect will be a sort of multi-hundred million dollar business. I agree. I mean, I, I, as you said, I mean, as we showed it, 100 million people need help. We have a solution. What is important on those Internet of Things and devices is the result. It's important when we buy it, after 15 days, we don't stop, I mean, we don't, we don't stop using it. So what I, I'm very concerned is about the result and changing the habits. Because if we are successful, then people can help the others because we have a solution here and it's a revolution. 
We call it the happy revolution who, who? to make people healthy and happier. We're going to ha have our... Sorry, what, what? I was going to say, these technologies are, uh, technology is at the point where these applications are not anymore for early adopters. These applications are things that work well for millions of people. Fair comment. Well, I think we're going to have our n the next session come up now. Do we, are we ready for that, for our, our next panel or speaker coming up uh, shortly? This is lunch. Oh, lunch. it's lunch. <laughs> oh, I'm, sto I'm copying, stopping you I from getting your power for lunch. Huh? Let me make one, have, one, uh, one comment on, on have, London's behalf. We, Sorry. Exactly, and yeah. we, have, um, we have a fork. So, without yeah, further ado, one. who's going to use a happy fork out there? Put your hand up. We've got, we got a few people, early adopters you that you are. Well done. Well, thank you very much to our panellists and our, um, our uh, random panellists. Thanks very much. Let's have thank lunch. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much.